Father Josiah here at the second step of our church tour, standing before the grand doors of entrance at our parish. These doors are part of eight western facade doors that have been handcrafted for the church by an artisan in Antakya, Turkey. Antakya is the ancient city of Antioch, one of the great cities of the Roman Empire and the staging area in the eastern part of the empire, both for the imperial residents and also for his wars in the east. Antioch, for those of you who are familiar with your Bibles, Antioch is the place, it's the city, where followers of Jesus Christ were first called Christians. That's recorded in the 11th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. Antioch also served as the missionary hub for St. Paul, using that as a place to launch his missionary endeavors throughout the known world at the time. Orthodox Christians have maintained a continuous presence of worship and service in the ancient city of Antioch, and it was just a few years ago that we went on pilgrimage to that ancient city and there enjoyed the fellowship of our brothers and sisters in Christ at the Cathedral of Saints Peter and Paul in the ancient city of Antioch. I was completely struck by the doors of that church. They were carved in beautiful iconic fashion and I asked the priest of the parish, I said, Father, who made those doors and can I meet him? And before we left, he had taken us to the workshop of this talented wood carver and we had been able to make a contract. And in fact, these doors made of American oak were hand carved in Turkey and shipped here to this country. And then the artisan himself flew here to uh, oversee these doors. And we have now installed them as the entrance into our church. These grand doors are 12 feet tall and seven feet wide. And they have carved faithful depictions of our Lord Jesus Christ and of the most pure Theotokos, his mother, in a position of supplication, or deus's position. All of these images on the doors were first sketched by our parish iconographers, the iconography team that is painting the interior of the church. They sketched these and then sent the sketches to Turkey so that these designs, when carved, would be faithful according to canonical depiction. Besides these grand doors, which are entered by the faithful at all divine services here at the church, when they're entered, the faithful venerate them. There are also single doors on either side of the grand door. Just to the south is the door of St. Andrew the Apostle, our patron. Just to the north is the door of St. Peter the Apostle holding the keys. And then there are two additional sets of double doors the double doors leading into the baptistry, and the double doors which are leading into the daily chapel. I'm standing in the plaza just to the west of the exonarthex of the church. This beautiful multi-colored plaza was modeled after a similar plaza at the very famous monastery dedicated to the Virgin Mary, Sednaya, in the central part of Syria. This monastery was built on the site of a vision that the Emperor Justinian had of the Virgin Mary in the 6th century. Just to get your feelers, Emperor Justinian died in 565 AD. We copied this Versailles pattern that you fa would find at the monastery there in Satnaya. We also planted these gorgeous multi-trunked California oaks because these trees as they grow provide a beautiful canopy so that people can after the divine services come out and have sweet fellowship together here. Now if you look just with me for a moment at the nose here of the plaza overlooking the street you'll see this beautiful eight-pointed star. We use this image, and images of stars in the floor of churches is very traditional, as the church serves as a guiding light to the nations, just as stars guide men in the sky. This is the place of proclamation on certain great feast days. And so, for instance, on the Sunday of Orthodoxy, after a procession around the church, the priest would mount his podium here, overlooking the plaza, 
and the hundreds of the faithful to read the Synodicon and to proclaim the triumph of Holy Orthodoxy and to anathematize heretics. This would be the place where the priest would first sing Christ is risen on the sacred night of Holy Pascha. This is the place of proclamation. Brothers and sisters, I'm walking down the gallery, the exonarthex of the church, on this beautiful stone walkway. I'm standing just above this magnificent eight-pointed star. This stone walkway encircles the church. And this encircling in a walkway is very traditional for classical churches. The reason is because there are many occasions in the liturgical year when the worship of the church is not able to be contained within an interior space where the very jubilation of the service breaks out and those who are the worshipers fervently inside the interior of the church temple come out following their clergy in processions of triumph, processions of mourning, processions of proclamation. Think with me if you will on Great and Holy Friday when the church bears the epitaphios out of the church or on Pascha night when the entire church empties and walks around the church. This exterior worship, this liturgy on the outside is ancient. The holy liturgy used to begin in the streets of the city and the initial movement were stational processions as the bishops would move through the city streets and the congregation would gather and then they would come at the little entrance to the, to the doors. It's our conviction that the good news sung about, preached about, prayed over on the interior of the church cannot stay in the interior of the church. It must come out. Faithful Christians must bring the message of God's love for man from the interior behind the doors out into the world and raise their voices in praise of the Holy God and speak the good news of Jesus' sacrifice and His mighty triumph over death to the whole world. This is one of the central messages of our exterior worship. Come join me as we go to our third stage in our church tour and enter into the baptismal chapel.